we have already established a number of important elements of matrix algebra. We have defined matrix multiplication, we have established associativity, and without associativity there would have been no going forward, and we have determined that matrix multiplication is non-commutative. That was a surprising discovery, but it's something that makes matrix algebra even more interesting. We're now going to take two decisive steps towards making the whole thing complete. And step number one is establishing the matrix that leaves any other matrix unchanged in the product. It is analogous to the number one in ordinary multiplication. Multiplying any number by the number one leaves that number unchanged. Five times one equals five. Well, this is the matrix equivalent. This matrix, called the identity matrix, leaves any other matrix that it multiplies from the right. And we have to be careful in specifying the order because the order of the multiplicative terms matters. So it's the matrix that leaves any other matrix that it multiplies from the right unchanged. Let's make sure that this is indeed the case for these two matrices. And also notice how our focus has shifted towards square matrices and it will remain largely on square matrices for the rest of the course. Uh, rectangular matrices will certainly reappear, but they won't occupy as much time and as much of our attention as square matrices. So for the next few lessons, get used to dealing with square matrices. Okay, so multiplying, carrying out this multiplication, let's take the column perspective on this product. It's the better perspective in this case. So we're going to find three linear combinations of these columns, and those will be the three columns of the answer. And the coefficients will come from the columns of this matrix. So for the first column of the answer, we have to take one column, one of the first column, none of the second, none of the third, paying attention to these coefficients. So this, of course, is the column picker, and it's the first column picker. So the first column of the answer is one, four, seven, and you can see identity at work. It's column by column, leaving the matrix unchanged. Of course, this column will pick out the second column of the matrix, and that's 258. And this last column will pick out the last column of the matrix, which is 369. And the semi-big picture is that these columns individually are column pickers. But the really big picture perspective is that this matrix leaves whatever comes on the left completely unchanged. That's what makes it the identity matrix. And for now, we have to be a little bit careful and call it the right identity. It's the identity, it's the matrix that leaves the other one unchanged when it appears on the right. Now, what happens when it appears on the left? A priori, there's no reason to expect that we would get the same answer because the order matters. So let's see what happens. Okay, first, let's take the column perspective on this product. We're going to have three columns in the answer, uh, linear combinations of these columns with coefficients coming from these columns. So for the first column, let's take the column perspective, then we'll switch to the row perspective, which is much better in this case. Okay, so our coefficients are one, four, and seven. And so one of this column plus four of this plus seven of this is of course one, four, seven. So this product, the mechanics of it from the column perspective, is more complicated than this column, than this product, but the result is the same. So here it was very easy, we just said take one of the first column. Here it's a complicated linear combination of columns, but doesn't matter, the result is still one, four, seven, even though the details are a little bit different. So to see this product as and as simple a light as we did this product, you have to take the row perspective on this product, where we're getting the answer one row at a time, and all of the rows in the result are the linear combinations of rows of this matrix with coefficients coming from the rows of this matrix. So for the first row, the linear combination takes its coefficients from the first row of this matrix, and of course this says take the first row, one, two, three. 
So this was a column picker when it appeared on the right. This is a row picker when it appears on the left. And that's the semi big picture perspective on this product. Of course, this row will take zero of this, one of this, zero of this. We'll just pick out the second row, four, five, six. The perspective is different. The numbers would have been the same either way. And this row will pick out the third row of this matrix, seven, eight, nine. So the semi big picture is that these are row pickers. The big picture is that this matrix, the identity matrix, leaves the matrix it multiplies from the left unchanged as well. So this spares us the need of calling one matrix the right identity and another matrix the left identity because it is the same matrix and it is called the identity matrix. Now, one note, this matrix, just making sure we have space, would leave any vector that it multiplies, and by vector I mean a three by one matrix, unchanged. So let me just put in the ones. The identity matrix is characterized by having ones on the diagonal and zero everywhere else. That's what you would say if you had to describe the identity matrix in words. A diagonal of, of all ones and zeros everywhere else. And if you multiply any other three by one matrix from the left, it will leave that matrix completely unchanged. This will be very important in the next video when we're talking about solving linear equations using matrix algebra. And of course, it would have left any one by three matrix unchanged as well if it appeared on its right. So there you go. This is the identity matrix, and we have only one step remaining in making matrix algebra complete.